discuss uh, right view, how to establish right understanding, okay, through listening to the Dharma and also <coughs> through different kind of uh, 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 learning process. I think basically most of us, uh, we all know the basic teachings of a Buddha. The teaching on impermanence, the teaching on loving kindness, the teaching on selflessness, yeah, and uh, all those teachings are so important. So we consider those are uh, right views. But after we have right views, it doesn't mean we can use right view all the time. Yeah, sometimes we know what is right, what is wrong. But in daily life, because we get used to something, we build up habits. The way we think, the way we act. Sometimes it's not cooperate with the right view. Yeah. Uh, for example, <coughs> maybe a person who's enjoying to have Cokes, sodas all the time. And uh, so one day he met a friend who introduced green tea to him. Green tea is good for you. <laughs> So instead of uh, drinking Cokes, maybe you switch your drink to green tea. Thank you so much. So this person accepted the green tea and it took the green tea to home. But somehow he left the green tea in the room, continued to drink Cokes. <laughs> so we all may, may have chances to establish right view. We know what is right. <coughs> And uh, we feel we already learned this part, but somehow how to apply those right view in daily life become your own thinking. When we say thinking, that means you actually use it. You are not just simply understand it. You use it when you think. You develop this kind of a view in your daily life. Okay. I remember some years ago, <coughs> one, one day uh, a member called me. He said, Venerable Hang Yi, would you please call this lady? She's a member of uh, the temple. Right now, she's uh, so angry with someone. They argued for uh, some time. She's uh, so mad. Would you please talk to her? I said, I will. Yeah, because I knew this lady for a long, long time. So that evening I called this lady. I said, please calm down. Please be calm. Don't be angry. Okay. You know what she said to me? Venerable Hang Yi, today no more Dharma. <laughs> Don't continue to talk Dharma to me today because I feel I have the right to be, ang uh, to be angry. So sometimes when we face some uh, situation, we couldn't control ourselves to use the right view to guide yourself. The way we think may be still the same. So after right view, Buddha said, the next step is build up right thinking. Be able to use right view as a way of your thinking, as a way of your uh, action. <coughs> So right thinking, uh, basically, that is the part how to use right view as the way we actually thinking in daily life. Okay, and uh, today <coughs> I wanted to use uh, a sutra. This sutra is related with uh, Venerable Anuruddha. So the sutra of Anuruddha's eight mindfulness. I couldn't find any English translation of this sutra. It's still in the uh, baskets in Chinese. So when I studied this uh, sutra, I discovered there's one part actually Buddha taught the Anuruddha and other disciples about a four path. The contents, how to uh, actually understand the, uh, uh, the practice of eight four path. So today I wanted to uh, use the part of teaching as contents to introduce how can we think correctly? How can we use right thinking in daily life? 
what kind of purpose that we have to set up and also make a plan to reach those uh, goals. According to this uh, sutra, Anarudas uh, ate mindfulness. Do you know who is Anaruda? Venerable Anaruda. He's one of the cousins of Buddha. So after Buddha achieved enlightenment, um, uh, uh, then Anaruda became a monk. He was very diligent. Yeah. And uh, one day he was meditating in a place. Then he discovered there are a kind of a mind, uh, seven kind of a mindfulness he should practice in daily life. Then Buddha add one more mindfulness. So total are eight mindfulness. But today we're not going to discuss those eight, five, eight uh, mindfulness. I just wanted to use the part right thinking according to this sutra. What are the right thinking? What are the right thoughts? Sometimes we translate this part into thoughts or thinking. And when we think about right thinking, what are the uh, uh, contents of those practices? According to the sutra, there are two kinds of right thinking. Two kinds of right thinking. One is worldly thinking. Worldly thinking. The thinking related with uh, uh, daily life as a human being. As a human being, which way we should be thinking. Okay. Also, there's another part, non-worldly thinking. And uh, sometimes we may trans uh, translate it, uh, this thinking into transcendental thinking. Okay. Transcendental thinking. That means you wanted to liberate from all kinds of afflictions. Yeah. First, I wanted to introduce the first part, world, worldly thinking. In this category, <coughs> Buddha said, thinking how to learn how to ask. Thinking how to learn how to ask. It's very simple. Thinking how to learn, how to improve myself, how to educate myself, okay? And also, how to ask questions. It's very simple. But when I study this part, sometimes I feel, even we all know, yeah, we need to learn, we need to ask questions, but not everyone be able to always learn something new, always to be able to ask questions. Okay. When you feel, I wanted to improve my learning skills, uh, skills, actually, you have to be open-minded. You wanted to open your mind. You wanted to be humble. When I think, I wanted to learn, that means I treat others like, like teachers. I will listen to you. I wanted to learn from you. I wanted to open my mind, uh, empty my mind. So that is uh, something we need to be uh, uh, prepared for. Okay? And also be able to ask questions. Uh, it's not easy for everyone. Sometimes I ask the audience, do you have any questions? Many people will raise, that's wonderful. But some people, they don't know how to ask. Okay. Like my, sis my uh, sister, <laughs> my brother, every time when I back to Burma, I visit the family, uh, my family. And uh, because I wanted to talk to my sisters uh, and also brother, so f family members, young or old, I try to ask you know, questions, let them answer so we can create conversations. But they never ask me a question about the Dharma. So people ask me, when you visit your family members, what do you want to accomplish? What is your, your, your goal when you talk to them? I said, I hope they can ask questions. So I have opportunities to share my learning on the Dharma. Okay. 
So asking question also requires certain kind of a skill. Okay, thinking on how to learn how to ask. That is the first one, worldly thinking. The second one is thinking how can I be friendly with others? Thinking how can I be friendly with others? Thinking how can I express my respect? How can I respect others? Actually, this attitude is very important. Every day when I have a chance to meet people, I wanted to use this kind of thinking before I meet people. How can I act? friendly with others? How can I show my respect to others? Actually, this will create harmony among people. So thinking how to be friendly with others. Thinking how can I show my respect to others? That is another attitude of thinking. Practice the right thinking. Okay. The third one is <clears throat> thinking how can I always check my, my mind, my thinking, my ideas? Or how can I observe precepts in daily life? Sometimes, okay, we go through some uh, uh, service or uh, ceremony. Oh, I wanted to uh, observe five precepts. After the ceremony, we may not be able to think on those precepts all the time. In this sutra, Buddha said, actually, after we accept those precepts, you wanted to use those precepts as guidance in your daily life. Always checking, observing, how am I talking, how am I doing, how am I thinking? Okay, that is uh, uh, the third one. Uh, um, and in Chinese translation, <coughs> actually, uh, we use two words. That means very careful attitude, very careful about what you are doing, very careful. Always try to uh, eliminate your mistakes. That those are the original translation. Very careful and also find a way to eliminate your own mistakes, prevent mistakes. Okay. <clears throat> the last one of worldly thinking is no harm to others. No harm. No harm to others. And uh, uh, I think uh, people in this room, we never wanted to harm others. Okay. And uh, we wish everyone will be fine, will be healthy, will be, you know, in a good uh, situation. <clears throat> but we still have to be careful when we have anger inside us, when we have a jealousy inside us. Sometimes the, w the will of your mind may not be perfect. Yeah. And uh, uh, when the situation is getting more serious, then people will do something uh, with evil action to harm others. Okay. And uh, for this part, <coughs> uh, I do want you to uh, observe uh, a lot of a phenomena in the society. Yeah. People, we all wanted to be rich, we wanted to be successful. We wanted to uh, accomplish the goal we hope okay, we, we can accomplish. Because of this competition, people in the society, sometimes we compete with others. During this competition, and uh, it's difficult to observe this part, thinking no harm to others, especially in political situation. <laughs> Political situation is difficult to practice this part. But uh, we all know that uh, if a society, a nation, that wishes to create better environment for people to live and uh, to take care of each other, 
actually even we compete with others, we still have some kind of attitude. How to eliminate, to harm others. Uh, later, I'm going to save some time for, all, uh, for, yeah, for, uh, for you to maybe to share some thoughts for this part. No harm to others. Okay. And as a monk, I lived in Houston for many years. And uh, uh, even uh, uh, myself, I still wanted to watch carefully, watch my mind carefully. Yeah. And uh, uh, there are different kind of groups around uh, uh, the uh, community. Uh, and and uh, uh, sometimes temples, with temples, we may have the same kind of uh, program there. And how can we live peacefully with each other? Do not harm others. Also, a kind of uh, uh, thinking in my mind all the time. We wanted to support each other, to create a harmony among temples. We don't want to do anything to harm other groups. Okay. And uh, for individuals, I do hope that uh, in daily life, uh, do our best. And, uh, use their thinking, no harm to anyone around us. Also, we wanted to establish one of the vow because of my existence. So people around me will be safe because of me, because I'm here. So people around me can be safe, can be feel joyful. Uh, that is uh, another attitude. I'm not just no harm to others, also, at the, same, at the same time, I do want to create a better environment for all people around me. Let's uh, uh, find a way to uh, uh, achieve this goal. Then, let's talk to, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's discuss another part, non-worldly uh, thinking or transcendental thinking. Okay. First, according to this uh, sutra, it says, thinking, how can I liberate from all kinds of uh, wrongdoing or all kinds of uh, affliction? Thinking, how can I liberate myself? Liberate myself. Don't be trapped by any wrongdoing or negative comments. In Chinese, actually, the translation uh, is find an opening, find a gate. Get out of this trap. Get out of this trap. The trap is negative comments. As a human being, we all have different kind of habits. Some are positive. Some attitude, some habits may not beneficial, may not be beneficial. And uh, we need to find a way to get rid of those traps. So find an opening to get out. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me use uh, some examples. Uh, in 1990, perhaps some of you already heard this uh, uh, story. In 1990, during the time we had a grand opening at the temple. I was so busy. And uh, uh, from the beginning of the construction of the temple, I was busy for quite a long time. And until the completion of the building, then I started to prepare everything for the grand opening ceremony. <coughs> because I was so busy for many years, I slowly accumulate a kind of attitude, a kind of habits, talking faster and faster, talking faster and faster. <laughs> if someone asks me, Mirabel, do you have uh, 20 minutes that I can talk to you? No, 10 minutes. No, no 20 minutes, just 10 minutes, because I was so busy. I was always in a hurry. 
and uh, I thought I was handling everything based on my own ability. I tried to accomplish everything in those days. I wanted to do my best to serve the temple. Until one afternoon, after I talked to a senior member of the temple, a lady, I was talking to her directly with a certain, certain uh, no, harsh word, direct words. Then this lady was crying in front of me. She was not uh, young, she's a kind of uh, aged person. She's a very, very strong person. But somehow I saw tears coming from her eyes. I was a little shocked because I, I met this lady for many, many years. Uh, many years ago, I, I knew she's a strong person. But after I saw this, then I used another thinking. Analyzes your own attitude. How can I prevent this phenomena in the future? How can I pre uh, prevent this kind of uh, doing in the future? What's wrong with me? So I started to think, to check. Also, this is a kind of a thinking too. But the thinking was, I wanted to carefully check myself. What did I do wrong? So this lady was crying. Then I checked myself. Then I analyzed my habits, attitudes in those days. I discovered I was lack of enough patience to talk to everyone around me. In, in those days, those days, I was in a hurry. I did not have enough patience to listen, to talk. So that evening, I told myself, from today, I wanted to make a vow. I wanted to uh, cultivate, increase my patience when I see people. Okay. So from there, it took me about three years, slowly accumulate patience, patience, a little by little. But how can we improve ourselves? You have to remember, I wanted to increase my patience. Every time when you talk, when you see people, when you have meetings with others. Okay. So for this part, actually having patience is a gate for me to go through to liberate myself from impatience. Okay, so find your own gate. Go through the gate. Liberate yourself from all kinds of negative comments. You don't have to do a lot of uh, practice at the same time. Focus on one goal. I wanted to increase my patience. With this kind of th thinking, Let's do it, practice this for some years, one year, or two years, or three years. <coughs> Today I cannot say that uh, I'm a, uh, perfect on my patience. Sometimes I may still not, you know, handling things well, or, uh, properly. But I still remember I need to continue to increase my patience in order to take care of the temple, take care of uh, programs, because this is what I need to make me f be free from all kinds of afflictions, okay, negative comments. Okay. So this is the first one. The second one is be able to remain calm, thinking, I always want to remain calm, calm. Maintain your own calmness. And also be able to observe silence in certain situations. You don't want to argue with everyone all the time. Sometimes be able to observe silence. No more argument. Okay. No more verbal fighting. Because it's useless. And it's wasting your energy. Okay. Especially when we are not thinking right, 
the more verbal argument we have, the more problems we are going to create. Okay, talking too much sometimes is not good. <coughs> uh, you know, right after we bought the land for Bodhi Center in 2001, uh, after we purchased the land for uh, Bodhi Center, actually I was trying to find everyone that I can talk to. I was thinking, how can I learn to take care of this land, to develop this land? I, I'm a monk. I don't have a, a lot of experience or knowledge about developing a raw land in the area. So I talked to members, non-members, yeah. everyone that I, can, I could find in those days. Yeah. One day I invite <coughs> uh, a lady from uh, Houston community. Uh, she, she's a, a very a well-known uh, uh, person in Houston and uh, uh, people told me that she knows how to develop a land. Uh, even though I just met her once or twice uh, uh, before, one day I called her. I said, could you please come to the temple? I wanted to talk to you, to you, learn from you. You share your experience, you share your thoughts with me. So I was talking to her in a room for about <clears throat> over one hour, uh, close to two hours. Then I appreciate her time, okay, uh, her kindness. Then she left. But after uh, a week, a member uh, who, who's uh, her, the lady's uh, good friend for many years, she came to me and she said, Reverend, did you talk to someone at the temple? My friend. Uh, she mentioned the name. Yes, I talked to her yeah, for some time. Yeah. Then I, I appreciate her, uh, uh, her coming and also sharing her experience. <coughs> but this lady told me, she said, after the lady talked to you for some time, she called me. She said, after I talked to Venerable Hang Yi for two hours, I didn't know why he bought the land. I didn't know What's, what he's going to do with the land. <laughs> that was very disappointing for me to hear. That was kind of uh, upset. I was very sincerely to talk to her, learn from her, ask him questions, asking her questions. At least my attitude was very friendly. Also, I wanted to learn, also explain, my idea about American Body Center. But somehow she mentioned this to another person uh, she knows. After I heard uh, these words, I was a little upset. But as a monk, I wanted to use this uh, thinking. I don't want to her and argue with her. Why did you tell me uh, in this way? Why did you uh, uh, tell someone that I, I didn't know what I'm going to do with the land? Actually, I explained everything. The idea about Bodhi Center, I explained everything. Oh, it's better observe silence at, at the time. It's better to observe silence. No more argument, no more talking. Yeah. At the same time, I wanted to remain my uh, positive thoughts about this lady. No harm to anyone. Don't create evil e uh, will at this moment. Even this person, I still wish someday she will understand the idea of American Body Center. After we set up <coughs> Bamboo Grove, Finally, after a few years, we set up Bamboo Grove. I called the lady again. Would you go to uh, Bodhi Center to see the place with me? 
she went there with me and uh, I let her look around the place this is the beginning of American Buddhist Center you don't have to use words to explain to you know to uh, tell her everything just show her what we were doing over there yeah so sometimes <clears throat> We are facing different kind of uh, phenomenon. Different people create different kind of uh, uh, expression uh, based on their own understanding. Uh, we don't have to always uh, explain, argue. We wanted to observe silence and also be able to uh, maintain our calmness. Actually, that means don't be easily disturbed by other people. Don't be easily dis disturbed by other people. That is the, uh, 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 the thinking of non-worldly level. Don't make yourself in a situation easily disturbed by others. And uh, uh, sometimes people say some words Okay, before you, maybe behind you. After they say those words, maybe they forget. They don't remember. But somehow, we the person, we uh, the people who listen to those words, if we don't like, we remember all those words for some time. It's not beneficial. It's not beneficial. Yeah, because I have seen this phenomenon all the time. Verbal Han Yi, three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, somebody said this to me. I'm still, you know, angry. I'm still, yeah, uh, feel uncomfortable. Actually, uh, it's not beneficial. Okay. Finally, <coughs> in this sutra, Buddha said, Another lust, non-worldly or transcendental thinking is thinking of eradicate all attachments. Thinking of eradicate all attachments. Actually, there are two kinds of attachments. The first one is the attachment of yourself. You feel uh, you are independent. You feel uh, you have uh, a self inside you that will last uh, forever. It's not changing forever. But actually, it's not true. We all depend on each other. Okay. If we create, uh, if we continue to develop this kind of attachment, when we love people, that's okay. We unified as one. How about someone you don't feel? you wanted to talk to, then we against each other because of the, this attachment. Actually, we all depend on each other. Yeah. So this is the first attachment we need to get rid of. The second one is mine. After we have this self-attachment, then we create another attachment. This is mine. <laughs> This is my temple. This is my group. This is my talk. And uh, slowly, actually, we accumulate a lot of attachments in daily life. Okay, because this is mine. Okay, uh, so we separate our belongings with others. We cannot easily share what we have with others. Especially someone we don't like, we never wanted to share. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when you go to dealers, uh, recently um, uh, the temple bought a new car. You know, when you go to dealers, if you passing through dealer, uh, uh, dealers uh, uh, sell what do you call it? Showrooms. You feel there are so many new cars. None of the cars are yours. It's okay. You don't never. You never pay attention. You don't worry about how. To, how about after you 
decided to buy a car. Select, select one car, that is your car. From that moment, you feel, this is mine. Then, uh, uh, more or less, we have a kind of uh, attachment to this car. Okay, even myself. Oh, I wanted to uh, keep the car in uh, good condition, okay? And uh, uh, use this properly, do not harm my car. <laughs> There are different kind of a thinking in your mind because you feel this is mine. And uh, uh, especially <coughs> emotionally, we occupied something we love. Human relationship, okay, friendship, uh, uh, your position, okay, and uh, your accomplishment. Yeah, uh, this is my uh, uh, my position. This is my job. Okay, and uh, uh, so this is another part part that we uh, wanted to understand how to find a way to detach from this kind of attachment, mind, and uh, be able to be free and uh, make yourself. Uh, feel more comfortable in daily life. Okay. <clears throat> Finally, if we wanted to uh, simplify all those thinking, actually uh, uh, reading other uh, books or sutras, basically there are three <clears throat> simple way to check our own thinking, uh, which way is right, which way is wrong. Any thinking related with greed, anger, ignorance. Those are negative thinking. Anything related with no greed, no anger, no ignorance, those are positive thinking. So that was very simple to understand. Um, okay, I think uh, today, uh, let me save more time for you maybe to discuss and uh, to share your thoughts. Uh, any comments today? Yes, Daniel? Thank you for yes. Um, when we talk about these kinds of uh, lessons and wisdom, uh, we hear it and agree that yeah, that's the truth, that's right. But then when the moments come, we, our feelings don't correspond to what we intellectually understand and agree to. And so my question is, <coughs> after you decided no greed, no ignorance, <laughs> uh, kindness to others, all of these things, how do you, what are they? Uh, how do you take the intellectual uh, knowledge and make it transformative so that this is the way you naturally feel and respond to things without the need of correction after the fact? Uh, Daniel, thank you for asking me uh, this question. From the beginning, when we started to build American Buddhist Center, actually in my mind, I did write down a sentence. The center is not mine. Also, I, uh, uh, I'm not able to build the center by myself. So actually, you have a few sentences in your mind. You write it down. Because as a monk, when I'm doing this uh, work, I wanted to remind myself, no attachment, whatever I, I'm doing for the center. So I was not able to build a center by myself. Everybody joined, we build a center as a group. 
okay? And after the center is completed, I never say, this is my center. I never use these words. This is our center. So, uh, you wanted to use a few phrases or sentences in your mind to uh, remind yourself whenever I think about the center, I did not build the center myself alone. Okay, actually, that, that is a reality. Everyone joined the effort, and so we can establish this center. After the center is completed, even uh, I'm the abbot of the center, I don't want to think, this is my center. And also, when I go to the center, I still thinking myself, I'm a part of the center. I'm one member of the center. Okay, I'm a one volunteer of the center. I don't want to see the center. This is a mine. So use those uh, sentences as daily thinking. You are not going to wait until people ask you, then uh, answer uh, the question by use those sentences. Actually, you want to use this as a way of your own thinking. Uh, just like uh, before I mentioned that uh, I wanted to increase my patience. Actually, after I wake up in the morning, today I wanted to continue to increase my patience. I still wanted to remember how can I find a way to train myself, increase my patience. So that is the beginning of the day. Probably when you follow this thinking, when you talk to someone, those thoughts will come to you. And uh, you actually use it at the moment. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. Any other 